Hi there. Welcome to the Finnish Museum of Games. We are currently here at the Museum Center Vapriki, which is under renovation, and why you will hear all the sounds of construction around us. This is the main arena of the Museum of Games, which was established in 2017. It was partially crowdfunded with over 1,100 uh, 1, backers, so a very popular project for the time, and we set the crowdfunding uh, record for Finland at the, at the time. The museum takes up an entire floor from the museum center, and it presents the history of Finnish gaming from the almost prehistoric age up to the present day. On the main arena here, we have a display with gaming systems from the early 70s onwards up to almost the present day. And here are some of the later Finnish mobile games that we have on display and playable. The important thing about the museum is that most of the games we have on display are also playable, so you can try them out and also watch interesting videos about the developers and, and the game-making process. This is the wall of consoles here at the museum, and it's just to showcase some of the noteworthy systems and also some fairly obscure systems from along the years. We start off, of course, with the Magnavox Odyssey from 1972-73 in Europe, and uh, it's quite peculiar controller which is quite unlike the things we are seeing nowadays you just have two pots that you need to turn and uh, of course that was then followed by well pong systems first but then then the atari vcs the 2600 hugely popular system then the 5200 not as popular the 7800 and then the Atari Lynx, Jaguar, and so on. So that's, that's like the Atari bloodline. Then, then we have, of course, the NES, the Game Boy, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, up to the Wii, which was a massive success at the time. So that's the Nintendo side of things. Magnavox then went on to become Philips. They made the video pack, the CDI, and haven't made any consoles since. This is the place where visitors to the museum they can look at the systems, they can see what they recognize. It's also a popular place for taking selfies and, and, and posting pictures on, on social media. This is the little game shop that we've set up here at the museum. And of course, it's not really selling anything, but it's like a time capsule of, of, of what game stores were like at around the turn of the millennium, so 20 years ago. Uh, shops like this don't really exist anymore because Games are now sold digitally, and supermarkets and such also carry them. So the individual game retailers are very few and far between. But back in 2000, 2001, you could still find a place like this in almost all of the larger cities. So this is an enthusiast shop from that time. We have some PlayStation 2 stuff, Dreamcast, of course, GameCube, PC as well. Then we have some import stuff from Japan, all kinds of things. And one of the things we've collected here are some N-Gage memorabilia, memorabilia items. I'm not sure how many of you have seen an N-Gage snowboard before, but there's, there's one. And uh, other such items that we've also hidden some fairly rare stuff here among the items. So if you're a hardcore collector, you might find something that you haven't seen before or that might delight you in that special way. The museum is set up like a series of corridors. We have these long winding paths that run around the entire area and they are laden with these uh, exhibits that you can play yourself. For example, here we have Drop Mania, a game that you could buy on an ice cream truck from 1999. So we have um, I think more than 60 or more than 70 games that you can try, and most of them are along these corridors. And from the corridors, you can branch out into the smaller thematic rooms or period rooms that represent snapshots in the history of gaming. This is one of the 
thematic rooms that we've set up here at the museum. We have a total of six of them. And they represent a snapshot from a certain year. And this is from 1985. And being in Finland in 1985 means that you have a Commodore 64. So we have one set up here, and you can play Boulder Dash on it at the moment. And as well as the system which you can use, there are also some very nice period correct items here that you can you can have a look at. And, and the funny thing is that people have been bringing more of this in. Nothing has been stolen, but people have brought in these nice items from their past and, and things that would belong in this year. So it's nice to come again and see what has happened since, since last time. Perhaps the most popular room that we have here at the museum, of, of course, is the, is the video arcade. And as you can see and hear, it's also under construction at the moment. We're fixing some of the machines and, and, and so on. We have a nice selection of, of different games here, starting with electromechanical games from the early 70s. We have the Sega Jet Rocket from 1970. We have a Pong machine. And the latest machine at the moment is Ferrari 355 from 1999. But uh, perhaps the, the most popular machine and, and the one dearest to me is the Outrun machine from, from 1986, Yu Suzuki's legendary game. And this is a mobile full sit-down version that moves with the gameplay. And uh, the upside about the restrictions and, and the renovation is that it's currently available, so I can have a go. Get ready. 